The plants that make up the great outdoors create a landscape of puzzles that researchers have yet to solve. Whether you're hiking, cooking, or eating, you are interacting with plant diversity. There are many intriguing aspects of this landscape of plant biodiversity. Here in the tall grass prairie surrounding Kansas State University, there are some 600 species of flowering plants. Scientists who study this diversity are interested in these species, how they are related, how they can be classified, and what has driven the diversity we see today. But we're only just starting to appreciate a hidden aspect of diversity in plants, and it relates to a phenomenon called polyploidy. Working to understand how polyploidy affects plant diversity is Dr. Carolyn Ferguson. Ferguson is a botanist at Kansas State University, researching and studying polyploidy and diversity in plants. Polyploidy is the condition of having extra sets of chromosomes in the cells, so a lot more DNA. Many animals can't tolerate extra sets of chromosomes. Even a single extra chromosome can be detrimental in many cases. But polyploidy happens often in plants, and it's happened so many times in their evolutionary history that we're interested in understanding what advantages polyploidy may confer in particular environments. Researchers use various laboratory testing techniques to uncover diversity within and among plant species. My research team uses the plant group Phlox to explore questions of plant systematics, which is the evolutionary study of plant diversity. Ferguson's research starts in the field, where plant samples are collected from natural populations of each species. Phlox is a group of about 60 species. It's a really interesting study system because a lot of species are polyploid, and in some cases there's even variation within a species with regard to levels of ploidy. Our current work links researchers in my lab and the Kansas State University Herbarium with collaborating labs at Michigan State University and at the Desert Botanical Garden in Phoenix, Arizona. These samples then travel to the Kansas State Herbarium a museum for plant diversity studies. They are prepared as archival quality specimens that are permanently preserved and can be used for ongoing study and testing by Ferguson, as well as by other current and future researchers. The focus of our work is the phenomenon of polyploidy and how it affects different aspects of diversity in plants. One of the types of testing Ferguson and the team conduct is chromosome counting. This involves observing dividing cells under a microscope to see and literally count the chromosomes within the nuclei of the cells. Plant diversity is really important for us to understand as humans because we use plants for so many different things. We're all dependent on plants and on plant diversity in ways we don't even fully understand right now. And when we don't understand or recognize biodiversity, we run the risk of losing it. The other testing done is called flow cytometry. This testing involves a process that requires chopping leaf samples up in a buffer, and here you see the resulting green liquid. The chopping breaks open the cells, and then the nuclei, which contain the chromosomes, can be separated. The DNA in those nuclei is then stained with a fluorescent dye. When the nuclei are run through the flow cytometer, the amount of fluorescence produced by the sample is measured. The greater the fluorescence of the sample, the more DNA the nuclei contain. Ferguson's research is finding that there is variation in the numbers of sets of chromosomes in some species of flocks, and that this aspect of biodiversity is interesting and underappreciated. Say these circles are cells, and will draw their chromosomes, which is where the DNA is. These cells are not polyploid, they're what we might think of as regular cells. Each cell has two sets of chromosomes, one set that came from mom, or, and one set that came from dad. The these cells are diploid cells, Di, Di for two sets. Now let's look at a cell that has double the number of chromosomes. In this case, the cells have four sets of chromosomes. These are tetraploid, tetra meaning four. There's a lot more DNA. Anytime cells have more than the regular two sets of chromosomes, you have polyploidy. One of the most interesting things about polyploidy is that we are often unaware of it. In some recognized species, there are regular or diploid plants and there are polyploid plants, but we generally can't easily tell which are which. This situation of polyploidy is really common in plants. Did you know that many of the domesticated plant species we eat and use are polyploid? Strawberries are polyploid. The polyploid plants might be a little bigger or have wider petals in their flowers. They might be able to grow in slightly different habitats, 
and they may maintain more genetic diversity, but we can't easily see this diversity. As researchers, we want to be able to detect this diversity and then understand what its consequences are so we can better understand plant evolution. In turn, Ferguson's flocks research gives us not only a deeper appreciation for biodiversity, but also an opportunity to explore how this diversity may benefit plants in different environments.